to get rolling, and then we'll okay. we'll talk. All right. Yeah. Sure. So, Rocky. First of all, where did you get the name Rocky from? Well, we started off a, a little group here in Tramore one time called uh, the Pathfinders, and there's a chap called uh, Sean Kennedy from Otterns Terrace, and he became our manager. Well, we weren't called the Pathfinders originally, but we didn't really have a name as such. But uh, he actually gave us the Pathfinders, and then uh, one one day he happened to get, make a few. Um, he got us a book in some place up in Tipperary. And he decided to, to, to put out posters. And he had it on at um, uh, the Pathfinders featuring the great Rocky Mills on it. And I went, I, I challenged them over that. Like I said, hey, Sean, look, come on, man. That's the boxer's name. See, at that time, there's a guy called Rocky Marciano. Did you ever hear him? Yeah. He was the great, the first fantastic boxer whenever. He retired undefeated, actually. You know? A white man, he was of Italian extraction. But anyway, uh, they called me Rocky and stuck. And I said to him, why'd you give me a boxer's name? I couldn't think of nothing else, he said. Because you were rocking around the place. <laughs> so it was as simple as that. Sean knew he was not too well, I believe, but he's not, he's not in Ireland, he's in England. I don't hear he's not too well. And we were talking to uh, Annette Cr Crane, and she was saying that you used to... <laughs> You used to sing Mario and Anza yeah. as a young lad. That's right, yeah. On the train going into Waterford. Yeah, but I, I chickened out on that one because of the, the reason why I couldn't hit the high seas like, like Mario Lanza. Mario Lanza could. So I figured that this, this guy comes along then, the complete opposite. And that, he just blew me mind, Elvis Presley. I just... Pfft. So I'm going, I'm going to copy him. I'm going to base myself on him, not Mario Lanza. That's what I've done. So I'm doing it there 61 years, as I say. <laughs> but, but, but you must have always had a love of singing. Pardon? You always love singing. Oh, yes. But I love a good singer. I love a good tenor, believe it. I mean, obviously, Mario Danza was a great tenor. But I love a good tenor, uh, a good voice. You know what I mean? I'm a voice man. I love a good voice. That's really good. That's, uh, you know. And uh, was there a singing in your family before you? Like the other? No, my mother could sing lovely. She's a beautiful singer. Lord of mercy. She's from Waterford. Her name was Cook originally from Waterford City. My father being Mills, of course, but my great grandfather came from Tramore. So we're a very old family on the Mills side in Tramore. I think when, when Tramore was only a village, one of them was the Mills in it, you know? A couple of hundred years ago, the 1800s. So, um, so I mean, uh, you, you, were all, you were seen from a young age. And tell me, you went to the, did you go to the CBS? Yes. And what was that like? I didn't like it. You know, in those days, they were kind of beating you for nothing with sticks and letters. You know what I mean? And what's different now, it's gone, this has gone the opposite now. It's gone too lenient. <laughs> It don't want me to say so. <laughs> and, and did you, like in, in primary school, I mean, did you, like, did you, I've, did I've, anything you liked in? I had a, I just like, I just like, I used to sing, I, the voice of was voice okay. I had a, you know, and that's, the voice of was voice. But uh, some people tell me that I ruined it when, when I turned to Elvis, but I don't know. <laughs> And then, uh, <laughs> did, you, did you stay on? Did you go to secondary? No, I quit school when I was about 12 or 13. In those days, like, uh, kids, there was no, nothing around and ain't much for people unless you were kind of well off or you were the other way. So I was delivering milk before I go to school and milk after school. So then I got fed up of going to school. So I quit that and just went on the milk, the milk journeys the whole time. You're getting, you're, getting, you're getting something out of me no one else ever got. Yeah. <laughs> and, and tell me, when you were delivering the milk around, right? Yeah. Would you remember any of the old characters that you used to meet? Yeah. Now, this is where I got the problem. Because, as I was saying, I'm 77 years of age now. And my memories begin to slip. 
So maybe I caught me at a wrong time. Yeah, no Should have caught me 10 years ago. No hassle. No hassle. <laughs> and then, and then uh, did you, like, would you... Uh, there, was some, there were some great characters in Tremor in those days, but I just can't, can't yeah. remember. But would you, did you do your round in Tremor or in Waterford? Oh, Tremor. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Water, in, working in Tremor. And did you move to England then? I didn't want to England when I was a kid, yeah, about 16, 17, for a while. Came back, went over again, came back. Went well, over where did again, you go in Came England? back, London, Kilburn, around then, you know, northwest London. And what, did you work in the, on the buildings? I worked uh, in factories, mostly, I didn't go near buildings, no. I thought they were too, too tough. So I, uh, in factories and... But then again, I was, I was singing Elvis, I was coming back here and I was singing Elvis. As, as, as I say, I was singing Elvis since I was 16, so... In between times, I was singing Elvis Presley, and, you know, so... I never stopped singing Elvis Presley since, I and think. Then, I mean, did you, you, you basically, from a young age, then you started to go into the music business? Yeah, oh yeah. And then, of course, the show bands came out then, of course, as well, you know. And uh, they were they were big. And, and I can tell you, in Ireland, in those days, all the... All the halls were getting full up with all the the Royal Show Band and the Miami and all the different groups and bands coming, and because um, I I was in a band one a show a show band one time, and it's the same my life I can't remember it, the name of it. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> and what, what were the venues that you played in? I mean, did you play in the Silver Slipper? Yeah, I'd, I played in the Silver Slipper, played in the Atlantic Dance Hall. You know, before you know. And um, played in the Olympia in Waterford, I think, a couple of times. But uh, then, of course, the pubs are starting to pick up on the music then, and, and I was going into the pubs as well. You know, so gradually then, there's pubs, I was doing those the whole time then, you know, you could say, you know, that's the way it was. And at what stage then did you stop playing with the band and go into using backing tracks and all that? Uh, that was only about, I'd, I'd say, it's maybe 50, 20, maybe 20 years ago, okay. between 50 and 20 years ago, you know? Okay. I went to the backing tracks. I found them more reliable. Now, don't get me wrong about guys, but uh, you know what I mean? Human beings being human beings, like, they can make mistakes and they can... <laughs> Change key. Change, you know what I mean? Like, and you'd be kind of up on the stage and you're, they're permanently all shook up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, with the backing tracks, it cannot go wrong yeah. because they're done to the very same arrangements of the singer. They're singing very same. You got the, the music is identical, note for note. Beautiful backing singers, the same as Elvis got. No difference. That's why I'd be, I was accused for a long time when I, when I went to them that it was Moiman. So saying he's only Moiman to Elvis for a long time until they caught on big. Now everybody is using them back in tracks, or, you know, back in music, whatever. But uh, as I say, the, the, the music was so good, it's the very same as what Elvis got, got like. And uh, that way you can't, you can't lose. You and know? did you know from the first time you heard Elvis that, that that was it? That was it. That's what I wanted to do. Where where did you hear it here the first time? Huh. That's a good question. I heard on the radio first, I think. Um, then, of course, uh, he made the film Love Me Tender, which was his first film. I wasn't too, too fond about that one. Second one, Loving You, was a very good film. Then you had Jailhouse Rock. Then you had uh, King Creole. And his music was, he was changing, he was varying everything, and he was changing, and I was changing with him up to the last, you know. So, um, but because uh, his voice, as I was saying, I saw a very variety in his voice. I used to love doing this stuff because it was, it, everyone was a challenge for me. You know, every second song would be a challenge. You know, some people just think of Elvis Presley as just a, some kind of a baboon up on the stage, shaking and you know, but he's a fantastic talent, you know. So um, I couldn't uh, differ, I couldn't go away from him to anybody else. Okay, I tried a couple of Roy Orbison songs, okay. Now, he's my second favourite singer. But, my God, 
There are no receivers taken. Ah, I couldn't take them notes. I could take most of them maybe, but not them all. So. Um, and he he played in Tremor, he he did, he, he did actually. He played. He played in the Olympia in Waterford. Oh, That's where he played. Okay. And I missed him that night. I was doing a gig someplace else. As only you know, that's a long time ago now. Yeah. But, uh, but he was very talented as well. He was very, very talented. And he wrote all his own stuff. Elvis never wrote a song. Elvis never wrote a song. But I written them for him. But the guys who wrote the songs for Elvis used to say when he'd sing them that they're his songs. <laughs> it was like as if he wrote them. Yeah. You know, he made him his own. He made him his own. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Roy Orbison, as you were saying there, he wrote, he wrote nearly all his own numbers, his own songs. Sung them in beautiful, beautiful voice. And even the Elvis story is kind of interesting too because he, <clears throat> I mean, he was a working class guy and he was a... He was, uh, he was. He, 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 they were very poor. I went down there actually and uh, we went to Memphis at the week after 9-11 actually. Family went down there and uh, we went to a, uh, to a shack where he was born. A little small, little cubby place, you know, and the, the funny thing about it was there was an old lady standing inside the door at the door, and you go up to have a look in, and she charge you a dollar. You give, you give her a dollar, and you walk in, and they see everything that was in the house, nothing. There's only one, one bed in the corner, and a kind of a pipe coming down through the ceiling, where they used to cook from. Poverty, snoot and misery in those days. So that's what he was born into. And about 100 yards down from the house, on, on the left-hand side, was a grave, the grave of his twin brother who died. Jesse Garron, they called him. He was Elvis Aaron and Jesse Garron. But he died at birth to his twin brother. And uh, very interesting to see all that. Very good. And like he saved up the money then to, uh, <coughs> to go into... Uh... Sun Records. Yeah. You know, uh, Sam Phillips' uh, Sun Records. Just five dollars to make uh, the cut a song, you know? So he went in. <laughs> but he was, he was allowing them to go in there with, with a couple of his mates for a long time for nothing. But he couldn't get anything out of Elvis that he wanted to hear, something different, for a long, long time. And it was during a tea break, a coffee break, they call him in America. Elvis started strumming the guitar himself and shaking all over and that's the right mama, you see. The man, hold it, hold it, he says, that's it, that's it. After, after about six months. So he got Elvis on that type of music into the rockabilly, they called it then, rockabilly. Just, so the daddy before rock and roll came out, you know. And, and Rocky, I know we have no backing tracks now, right? Yeah, I'm them here. Well, you do a do a, a verse of of that. Do that's right, Mama. Yeah. Well, that's all right, Mama. That's all right for you. That's all right, Mama. Now just any way you do, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right now, Mama, any way you do. That was a similar, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I sang it in that lower key, and I know what do, but... <laughs> yeah, but it was interesting how... I mean, did you identify with him from the point of view of all, so you being a working class guy? Oh, I did, yeah. I did, of course I did, yeah. The whole time, every, every time I look at him on the, in the film, just say, look at that guy up there now. And he came from, from nothing, really, like, you know, as such as the world standards. Then he ended up, ended up getting six cars when he got famous. Six big cars and Cadillacs and pff, you name it. But well, I mean, you're also, I mean, here, <clears throat> you're, you know, well known in, in certainly in this area, in, in the Southeast. But I mean, from the point of view, who you were doing your milk round or whatever, or whatever. But when you were at night time, you were a star. Yeah, well, that's a different story. Yeah, yeah you're right there. You're doing a different, you're, you're completely <coughs> transformed into somebody else. Well, I'm not saying Elvis Presley as such, but a copy of him, <laughs> you know. And you also went down the road of the whole Rasmataz and all that. Yeah, yeah, I got uh, five suits now, actually. Uh, Elvis Presley type suits, uh, four, four of the belts. I got them from Kentucky, USA. They are um, replicas, they're the very same as what Elvis wore. The belts are. The suits are slightly, it's a bit different, okay. They wouldn't, my suits wouldn't be as good as his ones now. But they're fairly good enough. <laughs> and are they, are they very hot to perform? No, they're not really. Surprisingly, they're not. 
I thought they would be. They're not. I said, the Elvis's ones were. The ones he had were twice as thick as mine, you know, kind of. I don't know how we stuck them. But, um, yes. But, uh, and, and I mean, <coughs> I mean, as well as obviously the buzz of copying or, you know, taking off your hero, but you also must have really enjoyed the whole fact that you got all these people dancing and having. Oh, it's great. I mean, that. even to this day, like now, if I get a. When I, when I feel I can get a good response, like I put more more into it then, you see. You know what I mean? That's the thing. You know, like, although you could start off sometimes with an audience and they'd be dead, but then you, then you say to yourself, I'm going to make them up. I'm going to get them. Then you're going on and you're, pff, they may give you a few flicks of the leg or something. They go, ah, you know what I mean? Things like that. Then they keep on going again and bang. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, get them, you can get them real fast, you know. If they're, if they're normal at all, you hear them. You know what I mean? They get people, they, they like it. They still like, I swear, they still love the original Elvis Presley songs. They still do to this day. Even kids coming up now, they, they, they say it. They say, I like Elvis. And you do, know? You, do you like the ballads? The Elvis ballads? Yeah, I love, I see, I love these voices, as I was saying. All, he sang all types. But I never heard a gospel singer as good as Elvis Presley. Now, honestly, black or white. And black people kind of always were the ones with the, the gospel voices. But when Elvis was singing a gospel song, the feel they put into it was just... Which one would you, would you, like, which one do you cover usually? Well, I don't do that many of them. Gospel ones? When I, yeah, not because I don't want to, but people kind of get a bit bored, okay. you see. But now with you no see, backing track, do you, you, see, you, see, you, see, you see, Ireland is going a bit pagan now, you know that, don't you? A lot of heathens around now. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> do a little bit of a gospel. Uh, oh, gee. I'm not used to getting caught without, without the music. Wait now, wait now, see now. In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not true, he would have told me so. He has gone away to live in that bright city. He is preparing me a mansion there, I know. I'm not used to saying it without music, you know. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Uh, he sang the, the gospel songs, it's fantastic, really, you know. And the, the Jordan years behind them, the vocal groups yeah. and the, the music, yeah, loved them, you know. Well, he had the best of people behind him. Oh, he had. Yeah. He had the best, yeah. Only the best. But, um, no, he was the one stuff phenomenal, like, you never get like him again. I don't think so, anyway. He was a one off. And then, I mean, was it very sad then later on when you saw him how he was becoming a mother? Oh, it was, yeah. I mean, when I, I knew it. Like, I knew, I knew he was going to die. I just had to, you know, he couldn't last the way he was. Uh, a lot of it was, I'll be honest with you, the people around him, you know. And uh, although Elvis, they were, trying, they, were, they were trying to get him to slim and to, to lay off the uppers and downers and that, that he was taking and all this thing. Although they were taking, they were taking them themselves as well. He was, I think he was in a bad environment coming to his end. The last two, two or three years maybe. Do you know what I mean? His manager, his manager was no help to him whatsoever. His manager was, I don't like talking about anybody, but he was 50% or more of Elvis's takings he was taking. And it was mostly 25% that they agreed on in the beginning. He was fleecing them as well. And uh, he was gambling at the time in the, in the Hilton Hotel in Vegas. Elvis used to perform there for, for a season, you know? Night after, he had him doing two gigs a day when he was sick. Instead of, because he was gambling. He was gambling all the money. He gambled a million and a quarter one, in one night. This on, is his manager. He's a manager. Wow. Yeah, a million and a quarter on one night. 
And, uh, you know, now Elvis never fought him over money because he was giving him probably Elvis enough to keep him quiet anyway. <laughs> you know, but I'm just saying, he's ripping them off from the word go. He made them, fair enough, he got on the big brakes. He got them on the, R the RCA label from the Sun label, which is only a local label. On the RCA, which is international. He got him onto that okay. He got him into the movies as well. He was a good manager, but he was a gangster. <laughs> as many others. <laughs> you know and, what and I mean? Speaking of gangsters, when you were playing, uh, in the, in the, in the, going around playing the bands and stuff like that, did you find it easy to get paid? Oh, yeah, I, I, in fairness now. Oh, yeah, in fairness. Yeah, you, you make a price with them, you know what I mean? And in fairness, you, a very, very... Well, if there was a small crowd, they'd try and knock you, OK, like you say. But that's understandable. Yeah. But you see, the thing... The, my, my, <laughs> my argument about that was, if the place was jam-packed, they wouldn't give you more. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's the way it was, like, you know what I mean? You know, sometimes you deal, you, you get the odd guy between the, trying to knock you, you know, but the majority of people were very fair. They would pay up, like, and, you know. And if they like you at all, then they, they, they keep you there as well, you know, kind of give you more, more gigs, you know. And, Rocky, did you see Elvis live? No. Never? Never did, no, no, you see. Elvis only came to Europe at the army. He was in the army. He was stationed in, in, in Hamburg and in, in Germany and that like. But uh, he never performed in Europe. Because I tell you the reason why now, this is another story, but it might be a bit boring for you. But Colonel Parker was his manager. Colonel Parker was an illegal entrant into America. He came in via Canada. He was a Dutch man, right? And uh, he didn't he hardly even know English when he came in first. He started, going all, he started going around all these carnies in America, all these carnivals, the kind of carnies used to call them. He got stuck in all those guys, these, these things. And he's a bit of a rogue in the world go, with money. And uh, he ended up even uh, managing a guy called Hank Snow one time, which was a, a, a way back a country western singer. You know, he's this first guy. But he's always say, if I got the right kind of a guy with the real talent, I'd make a fortune. He did. He made a fortune of Elvis. <laughs> he got his hands on Elvis. But that's why he didn't go outside America. But that, that, you know, that's the point I was going to make to you as well, like you see. He couldn't, you see, he's an illegal entrant, right? So he couldn't take, he couldn't, he couldn't go to Europe. And he was the kind of a guy who used to, he always go a week ahead of Elvis everywhere, doing business, a week ahead of him. Set up everything the way, to, he's, the way he wanted it. Of course, you know. And then Elvis would come along, you know. But he couldn't get back into uh, America if he left because he's an illegal entrant into America. So the, the, the thing, the point, a lot of people don't know that. And that's the main, that is the reason why Elvis never performed in Europe. Because he, he couldn't get back in again. And obviously you didn't get the opportunity to get over to America when you were younger. No, no, that, no, I see, that's it. That's true. That is true. So I couldn't uh, get to see the the king in, in reality. <laughs> but uh, but you you've paid a huge homage to him, haven't you? Oh, all my life, like since I was sixteen, you could say. You know what I mean? To still, I go down the road today and there or tomorrow, and I'd be people. You know, people be meeting people you never saw him before, and they might say, "Hey, hey, Elvis," you know, that kind of. And that's saying I look like him, but I probably remind him of. Him. I might remind people of Elvis. Elvis, they go. <laughs> I say, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's all part of the crack anyway. And then, did you did you get married yourself, Rocky? You yeah, know? I am married now, over fifty-one years. And can you, did your own? Married the same woman. That's a miracle. Yeah. I believe in miracles. And <laughs> did your own kids? Did they mind you being Elvis? Elvis? They thought I was nuts first. When they'd be growing up, they'd be going, kind of, oh, look at him, look, hey. He'd say to the, to, the, to the wife, we'll tell him to shut up, we'll tell him to go away, like, you know. But they, <laughs> that was when they were kids, because I, I was kind of a folk, and people would be looking at me. <laughs> and they'd be saying, you know, they'd be, they were kind of embarrassed they were, you know. But they got used to it. They got used to it. And they're the best, the best, the best kids in the world, you know. 
<laughs> so you're very persistent, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I couldn't give up the king, you know what I mean? I couldn't. That's, that's what I do, you see. It's inside me. I couldn't just stop because uh, they didn't want to be doing it. But you know what I mean? Like, say, for example, some people who do Elvis, they would be, they'd have a straight life and then they put on the suit and they become Elvis. Yeah. But you be, you were Elvis all the time. Well, I, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you're right, yeah. A lot of, actually, a lot of the amateurs at the moment are wearing wigs. Because mm. I don't go kind of bald, you know what I mean? So, will I go over and pull the hair? Yeah, yeah, look at that. It's real hair. Uh, that's question in five million, but it's real hair. Okay. If I, did, if I didn't do that, no, I'd be, I'd be as white as your short there. I'd be as grey as that. Yeah. But you can't get a grey Elvis, can you? What can you do? I caught in a trap. I can't get out, like the sun says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, you know that's it. You know I'm kind of um, I mean like I, I mean what I'm 77 now, so I mean what, what can I do now? I can't go backwards and I can't go forwards much. I can't be that many more years ahead of me. If I get another two years out of it, I'd be lucky. I'd say. Well, if you see Mick Jagger jumping around. Yeah, yeah, nice. you're right, you're right, you know, like, but I was getting, uh, see, I got this, I got a hip replacement here eight years ago, and this winter, I got terrible pains in my leg. I went to the doctor, Dr. Nolan up there, and he says to me, hey, Rocky, I think it could be our other hip now, he said. I said to myself, if it is, that, that, that'll probably be the end of me, you know. So um, he gave me a letter to send into the arcane. I, was, I went in uh, the winter follow only three weeks ago to Arkane, and they gave me uh, an X-ray. Of course, I was waiting two weeks for the, the results of the X-ray. I'm sweating the whole time, you know what I mean? So I'm lucky. It ain't the hip, it's only wear and tear. <laughs> <laughs> because if it was the hip this time, I could be oh, a long time out of the business. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I might be able to get back in again, you know. So um, I see uh, what it was. I think my my own belief is, we the longest winter here in record. I think, in my opinion, the longest, dirtiest winter, of cold and damp. For months on, since last October, maybe November anyway, constant cold, constant damp. Up to not too long ago, I'd say it was the weather was doing it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were complaining that never got pains in their legs. This year. So I, I'm hoping I'm right with that one. <laughs> Please God. Please God. And Rocky, to finish, would you give us another song before we finish? Any, any of you? <coughs> I don't know now, what artist will you do? <laughs> what did I say now? <clears throat> oh, I don't know now. You know I can be found Sitting home all alone If you can't come around at least please telephone I don't be cruel To a heart as true I don't want no other love A baby is still you are thinking of mm. Don't stop thinking of me Don't make me feel this way Come on over here and love me You know what I want you to say I don't be cruel to a heart as true. I don't want no other love. Oh, baby, it's still you I'm thinking of. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> it missed the music, you know. <laughs> That's great. Give us some glasses and glasses before we go. With the glasses, okay. And give us an hour. So. So what I do? Stand up here. Okay. Well, why would that be kind of a... No, no, you're fine, you're fine. Yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, get, just give the keys in one second. Give it one second. Yeah. What are we doing? Uh, Rocky's going to do a little, a little shimmy. Yeah. Sing it as well? Yeah, yeah, I'll just sing a, a verse, just a verse. Okay. Good idea, good idea. Is that up too high as a microphone? Will we get up there?
Huh? Where my brother the shine type, you know? How sure you are, I said. That's right. Join the microphone. Not at all, no. Sure. Ah, no. I'm not sure. I want you to. I got a woman mean as she can be. I got a woman mean as she can be. Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me. Yeah. The black cat up, he died of fright. Cause she crossed his path last night. I got a woman mean as she can be. Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me. Yeah. Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me. Hmm? Sometimes I think she's almost mean as me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get that? Do, do one more. Do one more, please. Okay. Because right, I tell you why. It's yeah. He has this camera, just focus on the head, and I just wanted to get some, okay. get, some, get some of the body movements. All right. Okay. So people like to rock, so people like to roll. We're moving on, we're going to we're going to satisfy my soul. Let's have a party. Woo! Let's have a party. Saying to the store, let's buy some more. Let's have a party tonight. I never kissed a bear, I never kissed a goon, but I could shake a chicken in the middle of a room. Let's have a party. Woo! Let's have a party. Mm. Saying to the store, let's buy some more. Let's have a party tonight. We're going to have a party tonight. Yeah. Is that all right? <laughs> it's like a, a private concert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's. Let's look at your rings for a second. Pardon? Hold up your rings on both of The rings, okay, all right. Why not? How about that? Will I go home? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. How was that? That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Mighty. Thank you. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, you've never lost it. Never had it. <laughs> <laughs>